Welcome to MathMaster.org. We're going to have a look at now at comparing the size of fractions. So you may be given some fractions and asked which of these is the biggest or which is the smallest or write these fractions in order from the largest to the smallest. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. Um, before you look at this video, please make sure that you're okay with the idea of finding equivalent fractions. You know what equivalent fractions mean and how you find them. Um, I've done a video on that, so please check the website and watch that video if, if you can't find equivalent fractions before you go on to looking at this video. Okay, let's have a look then. Here's two fractions, three-sixths and five-sixths. If I asked you, tell me which is the largest fraction from those, I think it would be quite clear that five-sixths is the larger fraction. It's describing more of the rectangle, the larger proportion of the rectangle is being shaded in. So I want you to think of it like this. If the denominators, that's the bottom number in the fraction, is the same, it's easy to tell which is the biggest fraction because it's just the largest number in the numerator. Five is bigger than three. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at another one now without the pictures. Seven eighths and three eighths. Well, I hope it's quite obvious that seven eighths will be the larger fraction. Again, the denominators are the same. We're talking about eighths. And obviously, seven eighths would be bigger than three eighths. So once the denominators are the same, we can just read off the top numbers and see that seven's bigger than three, so seven eighths must be the bigger fraction. Right, here's another couple of fractions now three fifths and seven tenths. What if I asked you which was the bigger fraction here? Well, it may not be obvious straight away, but we can use equivalent fractions to help us out. <clears throat> if you think about what we said um, in the last couple of questions, if the denominators of the fractions are the same, the bottom numbers are the same, then we can just read off the top numbers. Well, they're not here. We're talking in fifths and we're talking in tenths. But what could we do to that fraction three fifths to help us out here? Well, we could use equivalent fractions to rewrite three fifths as six tenths. So I've used an equivalent fraction. I've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by two. Three times two is six. Five times two is ten. So six tenths, when we learnt about equivalent fractions, we know that six tenths is actually describing the same size as three fifths. OK. So now we can just look and say, OK, is six tenths or seven tenths bigger? Or well, seven tenths is bigger. So that fraction, seven tenths, must be bigger than three fifths. Have a look at another example now. Eleven fifteenths and four fifths. Well, the denominators aren't the same if talking of fifths and fifteenths. But what we could do, of course, is make them the same by using equivalent fractions. Can you see how we do that? If I multiply the numerator and the denominator of the four fifths by three, I can turn that into a fraction of fifteenths, an equivalent fraction that's talking in fifteenths. So four fifths is the same thing as twelve fifteenths. OK, now it's easy. I just say is eleven fifteenths or 12 fifteenths bigger? Well, the 12 fifteenths is, is bigger, so that 4 fifths must be the largest fraction. <clears throat> OK, sometimes you're given more than just two fractions to compare the size of. Uh, here I've got four fractions, and I'm going to ask you if you can spot which of these, or if you can calculate which of these is the largest fraction. OK. What you say to yourself is, I need to get all the denominators the same. <clears throat> I can use equivalent fractions to help me with that. But what, what will the denominator be? Are we talking in halves, tenths, twentieths? What are we going to do? Well, if you look at those denominators, the 16, the 4, the 2 and the 8, what you'll notice 
is that they are all multiples of 16. They all go into 16 a whole number of times, don't they? So what you can do after you've spotted that you're going to turn them into sixteenths is do just that. So what I've done here is I've used equivalent fractions to turn all the fractions in the top row into equivalent fractions where the denominator is sixteenths. So the first fraction I just left it, it is 13 sixteenths is 13 sixteenths. The second fraction, 3 quarters, well I multiplied the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator of that fraction by 4 to give me 12 sixteenths. Then a half, the third, third fraction, I multiplied the numerator and the denominator by 8 to give me 8 sixteenths. And finally, 5 eighths is the same as 10 sixteenths. Now that we've got the denominators the same, we can just look to see which of the numerators is bigger. So if we look in that bottom row, the 13 sixteenths is the biggest fraction there. And so 13 sixteenths is the largest fraction out of all of those in the top row. Sometimes you might be given some fractions where it isn't immediately obvious what uh, denominator you want uh, to have common in, in all your equivalent fractions. So last time we had sixteenths. Well, if you look at these fractions here, I think it's, it's very tricky to find a number that is a multiple of all those denominators. I can't think of one very quickly off the top of my head. Um, so what I want you to um, understand here is that there is actually another way of going about this. We can use equivalent fractions and if we, if we can use them you definitely should. If you can make all the denominators of the fractions the same, go ahead and do it. It's nice and quick um, and, and by far the easiest method. But here I can't spot very quickly or very easily a number which is a multiple of 13, 3, 5 and 9. So what we're going to do is use this other method. If you think back to the first video which was talking about the basics of fractions, we said you can think about them as a division sum. So 9 thirteenths is actually the same thing as 9 divided by 13. 2 thirds is the same thing as 2 divided by 3. Numerator divided by denominator. So what I've done for each of these fractions here is I've actually done the division sum. What I've done is I've actually converted the fractions into the decimal number. Okay, I've converted each fraction into its equivalent decimal number. 9 thirteenths is 9 divided by 13, which is 0 0.69 to two decimal places. Notice that in the answers here, I've always rounded them to two decimal places. You can choose how many decimal places you want to round to, but that seems sensible for this question. Okay, two thirds is the same thing as two divided by three, which to do de two decimal places is 0 0.66, and so on. So I've actually done the division sums and converted the fractions to their equivalent decimal numbers. Then it's straightforward. You look at the decimal numbers and it's really quick and easy to say 0 0.78 is the largest of those. So 7 ninths must be the largest fraction that we've got there in that top row. That was comparing the size of fractions. If you want to see some more fantastic maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.